I could see people in the national group on the mountain, yet I appeared to be hovering overhead, heart filling with reverence, elicited great warmth radiating outward. Standing as soul, the warmth became very cool. I wanted to jump immediately to booty and had to slow down to move through to that plane. By slowing down, the field expanded slowly and opened to the ashramic world. As we proceeded, there was a sense of being drawn up drawn up and enveloped in a greater heart. All the tuning forks, the antennas in each cell were open and tuning, it kept expanding and expanding and was creative and welcoming, yet wordless, opening something opening, opening, something began to descend into the field. An all-encompassing presence, initiating an ancient knowing within. I had to remain very still, reverent, receptive, trusting. This presence seemed to come into and through me spreading out through the group. It was as if the presence was clear light and as it penetrated the group it was expressed as different colors and sounds harmonizing. As it poured through into Canada, it seemed to be pushing a dark, heavy cloud down through humanity and the other realms, down into the ground. And there were images of buds uncurling. And I had spontaneously sounded a note An image of a weaving together of nations through color and sound and the will to love. During the ohms, it was as if the great triangle of the great bear, Sirius and the Pleiades was sounding forth. I see two hands raised. Uh, Andrea, can you unmute yourself? Yes, that was a beautiful description. Thank you for that. I had a very physical sensation as I rose higher and higher. Um, I had a very palpable heartbeat that I still have. 
um, that occurred as I came together with the group and the group standing on the pinnacle above the United States of America. Um, I found myself rising higher and higher into the meditation with an anticipatory excitement and at the same time a sereneness and a profound silence um, bringing myself back into that reverent state th through the entire ascension and being reminded in that reverence of being so grateful so grateful and so humbled and so honored and so grateful and then I suddenly saw more of a personification of the United States of America in its precious adolescent being. And I saw a, a masculine personification of a, of a boy man standing very wide stanced, very adamant, um, with his arms crossed um, in a very stubborn and defiant way, his eyebrows very horizontal looking back at me. And then as I sort of looked to the other side, I saw this beautiful feminine girl woman who was a little bit less defiant, although that was within her. Um, but there was a softer aspect of her that sort of was questioning and had a longing to be embraced to find you know, behind that sort of defiance in, in beautiful, perfect adolescent ways. Um, and then as I saw the, that duality of the masculine and feminine, there was this morphing that really was created into an entire spectrum between and encompassing all that is within the masculine and feminine and eliminating sort of that duality, but seeing all and a unity in recognizing that the expression of conflict and imbalance and questioning that was within those two sort of personas and was now encompassing sort of all within a unified whole. But again, with that adolescent energy, which was so beautiful. And, and then as I watched that, I came back into our group and I saw our group with a very sort of maternal force and, and recognized that we needed to be very willing to listen compassionately. We needed to be respectful and unconditionally loving of what we were facing because in that they would be willing to listen back and that we would be able to tell them of all that we see that they are in their highest and best and most divine, that we could see the potential and help them to see their potential as they continue to grow and mature. Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm. Thank you. Hello. 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 Uh, as, as another voice within this group, uh, I found it interesting being born and raised in the United States and seeing the light of Israel and the light of Germany and mm -hmm. my, my parents being German Jews and myself being torn between the three countries. And yet the light of Germany was so bright, it called me to it. And I made some kind of deep commitment to represent that light within the work I do. So I could go on more, but that then it becomes more 
personalized about what I'm working on, etc. But there was a recognition within me that I must go forth with some of that energy. Hmm. Thank you. I didn't get your name. Are you Nina? Yeah, I'm Nina Meyerhoff, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Nina. You're welcome. Hello. Hello. Oh, I wasn't sure I could be heard. Um, I was on my pinnacle and I was looking at the, down at the country. Um, this is Britain. And I was acutely aware of um, areas of stress and pain in the country and a feeling of disunity and I had the words the words came to me there is nowhere where love is not and mm -hmm. this experience of a deep spiritual love underlying and holding all things in illumination and unity Hmm. Hi, this is Helen. Um, I also, from this platform that uh, we got to in the meditation, and with the explanation before the meditation, I could see the country, for Israel, that I live in, and it is my country now. Also, like a teenager, like an ad adolescent, and uh, it, and it is uh, so polarized, you know, with such an ancient history and ancient message to the world. Um, also the, the love and uh, is, uh, is the energy that can heal deep wounds and deep polarizations here. Um, I want to thank you, a uh, group that we are all together in that. And Uta, thank you for leading us into such an experience. Okay. Um, this is Maria Cristina in the United States. And I would mention that three of us have been getting together once a week since the first webinar. Uta, thank you, and group presented. So we have had a little bit of a It's a very rich field. It's a very rich field. And perhaps I would start by mentioning becoming so aware of our spiritual citizenship as citizens of a nation, our national disciples, um, which for me, as I think for many, was a bit challenging to really take a stand as a citizen of the United States of America. I bought flags. I bought mm. flags. The Tibetan says um, flags are points of power. And 
in a sense, taking back a flag. This meditation, I, it has been slow in coming, but during grounding the meditation, it was a, um, I was able to enter into that channel of flowing of enabling love to flow through the flags to be found in the nation. <clears throat> and also grounding, I will say, this is, as we have developed the meditation, the grounding has included the suggestion by one strong impression of a member of grounding through the rivers and the tributaries that flow through the United States and outward. Thank you, Jeff. Mm. Um, and it was just very beautiful to hear um, the, the last sharing because the United States is so incredibly diverse, you know, Germany and Jewish in the United States and pulled. And I'm terribly aware of that divisiveness is our strength. That divisiveness is, 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 indicates such a rich tapestry of the world represented as we search for higher unity. And that seemed to be um, key for our nation. And I could keep going because also can I just say one thing we had been bumping our heads around was indeed that very realm of, of what are we, the, the, the solar angel of the nation after a few weeks, the solar angel of the nation. And for the United States, we're given the second ray, so sometimes flooding the nation with the second ray, with blue, blue merging with the sixth ray. I'll stop it. I mean, it's just a, a wonderful, um, I'm very thankful. I'm very thankful to be participating, as we all are, I think, in this groundbreaking work, really. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maria Christina. Are you meeting every week in your triangle, or how do you work? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we've met four times, is that right, Jeff? Four times, five times, I'm not sure. Um, each time has been just such a downpouring of um, looking at the astrological chart. Um, interestingly, you know, I like the way, I like the way is said to be given to the keynote or sharings of the United States. And of course, even this leading to the Statue of Liberty for starters, I like the way. From France, from France, who, who had a touch of the Lords of Liberation, Liberty, Equality, Fraternity. It's just so rich. And I will just say that looking up, I like the way. Um, the Tibetan indicates that way to be, I think we have to go through, a, you know, we're called to re beautiful rebuilding of democracy on inner values, but eventually, um, and I don't know if I have the quote, so I don't know if I should even, I hate to, I hate to, um, Put my words on top, but basically, we even have a slideshow. Hey, that's how that one. Um, that's how we keep our thoughts together. Um, 
the line, uh, he, this is his words. Mm, a working relationship, I'm wrong. A new democracy. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, basically indicating that eventually there will be government by folks who are acknowledged to carry greater light mm -hmm. of enlightened souls, that eventually there is the vision that governments will be led by enlightened souls and acknowledged as such. And that was, I like the way referred to. I can't see it here right now. Mm. Yes, yeah, so so yes, we were on on Zoom, and we've met for quite a few hours, really, about ten hours at this point, working um, with this very beautiful meditation. Jeffrey has raised a hand. Yes, um, thank you. And thank you, Maria Christina. And uh, to Uta for your visionary leadership. This is uh, such a valuable and timely effort. Um, The, I really connect with the ideas, youthfulness, the adolescence, with all its wisdom, um, <laughs> which is not much wisdom, at least my mm -hmm. experience of adolescence. And it's just, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I have this concept of the, the national disciple. The nation is a, is a, disciple and it's like the disciple waking up after letting its um personality run rampant like waking up and think oh i really have got to get it together i'm i have such potential i can do so much better and <laughs> It just feels that the, you know, that the nation is getting it together. I feel that, you know, so, and uh, there's just a, there's such a strong impetus and a, and a worldwide need for groups, nations, individuals at all levels, all beings, seen and unseen, to pull one direction. It's very grateful for this work. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jeffrey. Yeah, I I have this uh, sense of the the value of as you said the national disciple making the effort to hold the whole picture. Also, Andrea said it in the beginning. Um, this holding a synthesis in our consciousness of these very different aspects. And of course, every time we do this meditation, every time we link in with our nation, uh, we are flooded with, with different impressions. It's like a kaleidoscope. Um, but in time and uh, with practice, uh, as a group, something is forming, a more synthetic picture is forming in the group consciousness, in the national 
disciple group consciousness. Um, and this has um, a stabilizing effect on the nation. This is how we, this one way, one effect that, uh, that we have as, uh, as a group that works with the national consciousness. I think it's very precious that, um, that we do this kind of groping work and that we share our impressions and learn from each other. I feel that uh, by doing this together, we have again been uh, uh, 70 plus people. Um, it's an interesting number to do this work together, 70. Um, it's uh, my sense is that by each of us standing on our pinnacles and holding our togetherness, our um, the love and the, the, the purpose that we share, we kind of like um, a higher plane, a higher level of consciousness, a strata uh, of our planet begins to vibrate, begins to become more more vivid, more yeah, more living. So it was, for me, it was like a whole strata is starting to buzz a little bit, um, making it more easy, more possible for each one on our various pinnacles to tune with this um, level of consciousness of a, of, a, of a soul of a nation. Thank you, Uta. When you mentioned the number of people on the call, at one point I counted and there were actually 71. And we're told that um, meditation is, is the, the number of people who are meditating is actually exponential. So if I'm doing the math correctly, 71 times 71 is equal to 5,041 people meditating at the same time. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, the outer group of Jesus was 70. Hmm. Maybe it takes 70 to, to bring a strata to buzz. There are a couple more people who would like to share. Judy, you unmuted, and also Kit, uh, you unmuted. Uh, please unmute yourself. Okay, yes, this is Kit. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay, thank you. This is um, Kit Kern, USA. And um, from the meditation, thank you so much for both the alignment and the meditation. One, I realized how much I'm still holding preconceptions and judgments and everything like that around my nation. And so the meditation was also a part of just trying to do that emptying process. And mm. what came through to me were two, um, were two, uh, impressions, and I will give uh, words to them. As one is uh, one is liberty was liberty, and the other one was the interconnectedness of all life. Um, but they also, but those words are actually um, sort of just symbols or limitations because although I didn't know, I couldn't define it or see it clearly, it, they definitely came through that that, that sort of um, the ashramic workers are, are 
actual Deva or Sol or whatever of the USA held them on a much, were holding it in a much more expansive way that, mm. than that we even can perceive or know at this point. Right. But, but that, but that um, even, but that humanity, um, you know, it was also with the recognition that humanity uh, can begin and has begun um, to support the, the, those, uh, those two things. Two. Mm -hmm. Yes, we definitely learn a lot about liberty and interconnectedness of our life now <laughs> in this world crisis. Hmm. Yeah, thank you for pointing out this, this uh, emptying process. I think this is really important um, by making ourselves empty we allow something so much wider as you say kid um, to come into our consciousness must be empty as empty as we can make it for that moment for that phase in the meditation afterwards of course there's a phase of trying to gently interpret what what we received but um, to to dare to stand naked so to say in this in the presence of the soul of a nation um, seems needed to to get a, to get a glimpse that is beyond our usual human capacity Judy. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you so much for this uh, wonderful work. Um, what it enabled me to do today is to merge uh, what was being offered uh, with the work that I've been doing as well. Um, and so when you had us go to the ashram, for me, the ashram was the ashram of synthesis uh, with the master R and the master M and the master DK there and connecting with uh, ashramic beings. Uh, I was able to look down over the soul of the United States and basically see the economy of the soul. Uh, it is what we're working with and learning about. And basically that economy is really all of the soul's uh, energy, force, substance, uh, and under it stands all the positive cosmic principles of love and right sharing all of those pieces. And this really was the soul at its highest level. Um, mm -hmm. We were able to have the, the light of soul go through into the nation's mental body and astral body and so on. Um, the right economy went through and so there was the energy and the substance, and it was all imbued with uh, the higher soul energies uh, that really this nation is supported by. And so it was a way of seeing kind of the work that needs to be done on that level of establishing right economy and using the soul of the nation to do that, mm -hmm. uh, to change the culture, to change the support. So it, it blended the two two things that I've been working with in terms of how to make that happen um, within the, the matters of uh, the nation itself. So thank you. Hmm. Well, this sounds very interesting. Um, our world crisis, of course, has so much to do with economy and uh, the, the new economy that we need to establish. 
to bring it now into <clears throat> into a relationship with the soul of the nation um, sounds to me very very interesting yes powerful so thank you for that mm. How do you work with the economy? Um, well, there are a number of different levels. I'm uh, with a group that meets on Sundays and we're looking at uh, how to support uh, the new economy that uh, needs to take place for the new culture and the new civilization to happen. Uh, mm. So we work together every Sunday and in addition, there's a group of us who are working with uh, a teacher on the disciple in the economy. And we're using mm. that uh, as a book to um, look at economy in its broadest context and trying to merge those two works. Uh, but this then helped me look at that economy in terms of individual nations and, and mine specifically, and how to actually bring those concepts through energetically to start seeding that work to happen. Hmm. Very interesting. And the sustainable development goals, Martha, the sustainable, directing the money towards a sustainable development goal? Well, the sustainable development goals uh, in its uh, greatest form would be the physical manifestation of the right economy and the right relationship happening. So yes, it just, it filters down. So that's at its more concrete level or its appearance. There are several comments that's been shared via the the question box and and I reposted them in the uh, chat so there are several mm -hmm. very comments. Okay, anyone else before we close? I want to add just one uh, impression that resonates with what Rasita shared about seeing the pain and suffering. The higher we shift in in our group meditation, the deeper we can perceive the pain and the, the what we can call collective karma or collective wounds, and that as it become part of our awareness, it also become part of our business, so to speak. And mm. so it would be interesting in one of the coming meetings to reflect on that and 
I think as the as we come up uh, from the full moon of Pisces, where one of the theme is redemption, I think it's a topic for our reflection, the same as Christ redeemed humanity as he lifted high in the cross while being crucified on the cross. The same mystery, I think, is opening up for the disciples. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And uh, this is what we have also planned. We want to, now we have established, you know, we, we have planned these, um, the sessions, the webinars uh, sequentially. So we have now established, uh, first we, we had a focus on the group and now on the uh, <clears throat> connection to the soul of the nation. And now we can uh, uh, turn our eyes downward, so to speak, into the personality with all the with all the conflicts and the pain and the confusion and all that there is there, all the karma, as you say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, the first sharing kit you shared, uh, may we have some silence first to record our impressions. Yes, let's, uh, I try to to remember to give a little bit more silence before we start the sharing next time. And if there are any uh, suggestions by you, uh, any questions that you would like to, to, to be addressed or something that you would like to share um, or yeah, ideas how to improve, uh, we'll be very grateful to get your input Okay, I think we have to close, Alexander, yes? Yes, we come uh, close to the closing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe we can remind when is our next meeting, Uta? It's on the 30th of uh, March, Tuesday again. Thank you, I didn't put it on the last slide we have, but yes, on okay. March. And also in the chat box, uh, there are uh, links uh, to the recordings and to the survey of the Creative Lab, along with the email to get in touch with Uta with any comments and suggestions. And the book by Uta Gabe, Awaken the Will to Love. Thank you. And thanks to everyone. Yeah, thank you everyone. Blessings.